chapter 3, Things Which Are Above, Colossians 3 verses 1 to 3, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Risen with Christ, all saved people are risen with Christ, and because we are risen with Him, we are to seek the things that are of eternal significance because we are seated with Him already in the heavenlies. We are to die to ourselves, because we were hid with Christ in God at our salvation. We were not hid with Christ in God at our baptism into Christ's body. Christ's death, which He did not deserve, became the death that we deserve for our sins. Colossians 3 verse 4 When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Christ, who is our life, shall appear. Christ will appear to us at the catching away, the rapture, when we meet him in the clouds. Then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Then we will appear with him in heaven before the Father to begin our ministries in the heavenly places. Christ will also appear at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble just before beginning to rule in the kingdom here on the earth. Notice how Paul interjects the phrase, who is our life, in reference to Christ. He ought to be our life because he is our life. We ought to be about his business. He will exalt his son in both heaven and in the earth. We are a part of his heavenly plan as members of the body of Christ and Israel is a part of his earthly plan. Colossians 3 verses 5 to 7 Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, the wrath of God punished all those sins that are mentioned in the person of Christ on the cross. Christ was delivered, killed, for our sins so we ought to kill, mortify, the very things that Christ died to pay for. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, the disobedient are the lost. We as believers today are not appointed unto wrath. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 9 For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Colossians 3 verses 8 to 10 But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Ye have put off the old man, since the old man is dead, we are to quit living like he is alive. Sure, the flesh is very real, but we no longer have to live under its power since there is a new power that is stronger living inside us. Put on the new man, we have to spend time with the new man and feed him as we used to feed the flesh, but with things that edify the spirit. The new man has a heavenly destiny instead of an earthly one. Renewed in knowledge, see Ephesians 4 about walking worthy, and 2 Corinthians 4 verses 16 to 18. Colossians 3 verse 11 where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Where, in the new man, the church which is his body, put off the world and put on the church, the body of Christ. Colossians 3 verse 12 Put on therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. Put on therefore, we are to practice being merciful, kind, humble, meek, and long-suffering with the lost as well as with other believers. The elect of God, Jesus Christ and Israel are exclusively referred to as the elect in all the Old Testament, but twice the body of Christ is given that title and it is important that we don't mix the two together. We are the elect of God because we are in Christ who is God's elect. Titus 1 verse 1 Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness. Isaiah 42 verse 1 Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth, 
I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Isaiah 45 verse 4 For Jacob my servant's sake, and Israel mine elect, I have even called. Thee by thy name, I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. Isaiah 65 verse 9, 22 And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob, and out of Judah an inheritor of my mountains, and mine elect shall inherit it, and my servants shall dwell there. They shall not build, and another inhabit, they shall not plant, and another eat, for as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. Election has to do with our service. There are only four verses mentioning the word elect in the whole Old Testament and they all have the word servant found in them. We as the body of Christ were elected before the foundation of the world to be conformed into his image by the renewing of our mind. Israel on the other hand was elected to become a nation of kings and priests. We as the body of Christ are to act like Christ our head that we may draw men unto him by displaying mercy and kindness to one another. We are to be meek and long-suffering not wanting our way over others. We are in the body of Christ, and we are elected to carry out his will for the world today, and that is to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. Ephesians 3 verses 8 to 9 unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hidden God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Galatians 3 verse 27 For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on. Christ. Romans 13 verse 14 But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh, to fulfill the lusts thereof. Colossians 3 verse 13 Forbearing one another, and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. This is 180 degrees opposite of what Christ told the little flock of believing Israel while he walked with them preaching the kingdom. Matthew 6 verse 12 And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Colossians 3 verses 14 to 15 And above all these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Put on charity. God has given us peace and has called us to be peacemakers. This can only come through the love that Christ alone gives. We are to be charitable to those that have not and tell them that it is Christ in you that provided the charity through you. Colossians 3 verse 16 Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. This cannot happen without you knowing the manifold wisdom of God, which concerns the hidden mysteries only revealed to the Apostle Paul. 1 Corinthians 2 verses 1 to 10 Admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, this is not just a call to sing hymns and spiritual songs, but it is also a call to let Christ's words dwell in us richly. Colossians 3 verses 17 to 25 And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives, and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service, as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God, and whatsoever ye do, do it heartily, as to the Lord, and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. Ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance. This speaks of those employed in secular work, who treat it as a holy calling and do what they do as to the Lord, not to men. 
Those who do will influence others to become a part of Christ's body and they will receive a reward. Those who give to the Lord's work, the fruit of their secular work will also receive a reward. This has nothing to do with inheriting something that was promised to Israel under the law. He that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. Those who do not will receive wood, hay, and stubble which will burn up at the last day. Chapter 4 The Mystery of Christ Chapter 4 is actually a continuation from chapter 3 where Paul was admonishing servants about their relationships to their masters, and now he changes pace and deals with the believing masters and their relationship to their servants. Colossians 4 verse 1 Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. Give unto your servants that which is just and equal, Bosses should treat their employees as they would like to be treated because one day, they will be rewarded by God for how they treated their employees. Continual Prayer Colossians 4 verses 2-4 to Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving, with all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance, to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest, as I ought to speak. Continue in prayer, this has the same thing as praying without ceasing. No one can pray 24 hours and 7 days every day, but Paul is telling all to never get out of the discipline of prayer. Praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance, to speak the mystery of Christ. The verse doesn't end with the word praying, it goes on to tell believers what Paul desired the Colossians to pray for in regards to him personally. Paul desired that a door would be opened that was right in front of him in his house arrest, so that he may go farther and reach more people than he could chain to a guard. He wanted to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, and we should want the same for ourselves and others. Titus 1 verse 9 holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Ephesians 3 verses 8 to 12 unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. For which I am also in bonds, Paul was a prisoner for making the mystery of Christ manifest to the Gentiles. The mystery of Christ is yet another mention of the mystery that through Christ God was making one new man that would dwell together with God in the heavens. Paul is praying for more doors to be opened so that he could continue to speak of the mystery of Christ, the very same thing that got him arrested in the first place. We are to be about reconciling people unto God. 2 Corinthians 5 verses 18 to 21 And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Colossians 4 verses 5 to 6 Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be alway with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. This admonition is not a general one to give us some good advice on daily conversations, but it will work for them as well. It is, however, an admonition to the believer about the proper attitude one should use when witnessing to another person, one that is without the body of Christ, i.e., church. The best way one can redeem the time is to spend it either a lost person sharing the gospel with them or else teaching a saved person the revelation of the mystery that God revealed to Paul. The mystery is the manifold wisdom of God as Paul taught the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 2 verses 1 to 8 
that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Everyone has different life experiences and different verses will work better than other verses with them. John 3 verse 16 won't solve their problem today if they are lost. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4. Fear comes when we are not prepared to face our enemy. Colossians 4 verses 7 to 9 All my state shall Tychicus declare unto you, who is a beloved brother, and a faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord, whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that he might know your estate, and comfort your hearts, with one Zymus, a faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you. They shall make known unto you all things which are done here. Tychicus helps Paul write this epistle along with one Zymus, who is the slave that Paul mentions in his epistle to Philemon. Paul most likely had a vision problem that prohibited him from personally penning his later epistles, which I believe is supported by scripture as the Galatians were willing to pluck out their own eyes and give them to Paul. Galatians 4 verse 15 Where is then the blessedness ye spake of? For I bear ye record, that, if it had been possible, ye would have plucked out your own eyes, and have given them to me. Tychicus would inform the saints in Coloss of Paul's state as he suffered for his faith in a Roman prison, but remember, God had Paul in prison. It was a part of his plan to give him time to write these epistles for the body of Christ. Colossians 4 verses 10 to 11 Aristarchus my fellow prisoner saluteth you, and Marcus, sister's son to Barnabas, touching whom ye receive commandments, if he come unto you, receive him winky face, and Jesus, which is called Justice, who are of the circumcision. These only are my fellow workers unto the kingdom of God, which have been a comfort unto me. Marcus, sister's son to Barnabas, John Mark, Marcus, is mentioned by Paul the very same person who left the work on one of Paul's early missionary journeys. Barnabas, after arguing with Paul on John's behalf, ended up taking John Mark, Marcus, with him because he was his uncle, who are of the circumcision. When Paul mentions that Justice, Marcus, and Aristarchus were his fellow workers unto the kingdom of God here, he is not saying that he and they were preaching the gospel of the kingdom. People who understand how to rightly divide the word of truth get confused by this passage because it mentions that they were of the circumcision and that they labored unto the kingdom of God. As regarding Paul's statement about the kingdom of God, Paul is referring to the kingdom of God in each individual's heart and the work of the church in this age. With regard to them being of the circumcision, it was John Mark who was with Paul on his first missionary journey as he and Barnabas preached the gospel of the grace of God to the Gentile world. Justice and Marcus were from the Jerusalem assembly, and they were working alongside Paul, but that does not mean that they were forcing Israel's program on these Gentile hearers. Paul helped the Jerusalem church often and did not expect them to practice what the Gentile churches were practicing, and the same was the truth even more so the other way around. Colossians 4 verses 12 to 13 Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluteth you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. For I bear him record, that he hath a great zeal for you, and them that are in Laodicea, and them in Hierapolis. Epaphras was Paul's friend and companion, and he had a lot of himself invested in the people of these places, and it was evidenced in his prayer life once he had left their presence that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God, we can only stand perfect and complete in him if we both understand and obey all of the will of God for us. Someone who does not know how to rightly divide the word of God can never stand complete or perfect, so it behooves us to tell people how to rightly divide the word of truth. Colossians 4 verses 14 to 16 Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas, greet you. Salute the brethren which are in Laodicea, and Nymphas, and the church which is in his house. And when this epistle is read among you, cause that it be read also in the church of the Laodiceans, and that ye likewise read the epistle from Laodicea. Demas, he is the one who departed from the apostle Paul unto Thessalonica having loved this present world as mentioned in 2 Timothy 4 verse 10 and Philemon 1 verse 24. The epistle from Laodicea, here we have an epistle written by Paul that is not found in the scriptures, why not? 
because it was not meant to be in the scriptures, because God preserves his word and whatever is meant to be in the scriptures is in it. Colossians 4 verse 17 And say to Archippus, Take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. Take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. Archippus was to preach the mystery of Christ and make it known to all men. Colossians 4 verse 18 The salutation by the hand of me, Paul. Remember my bonds. Grace be with you. Amen. Written from Rome to the Colossians by Tychicus and one Zymus. The salutation by the hand of me, Paul. Paul has Tychicus and one Zymus actually pen the words he has received from God. Remember my bonds. Paul leaves the people of Coloss with a request that has mostly been overlooked by the body of Christ today. Paul was the prisoner of Jesus Christ for us Gentiles according to Ephesians 3 verse 1 and Philemon 1 verse 9. The apostle of the Gentiles, our apostle, went to jail for trying to reach us with the gospel, and he wants us to remember that. Thank God for saving people which are willing to suffer so that others may hear the precious truth of God's word. Are you willing? The end.